7. I'm going to be using the first six verses of that particular text and talk about the world's favorite scripture. In the words of our Lord, he said in chapter 7, verse 1 of Matthew, Judge not that ye be not judged. For with what judgment you judge, you shall be judged. And with what measure you meet or measure, it shall be measured to you again. And why beholdest thou the mote that is in thy brother's eye, but considerest not the beam that is in thine own eye? Or how wilt thou say to thy brother, Let me pull out the mote out of thine eye, and behold, a beam is in thine own eye. Thou hypocrite, first cast out the beam out of thine own eye, and then shalt thou see clearly to cast out the mote out of thy brother's eye. Give not that which is holy unto the dogs, neither cast ye your pearls before swine, lest they trample them under their feet, and turn again and rend you. Pray with me. Father, again, thank you for the reading of the Word of God. Uh, thank you, Father, for the opportunity to stand on this Sunday evening and preach the whole counsel of the Word of God. And Lord, I pray that you'd illuminate our minds, give us understanding and illumination tonight, Father, of this text, that we might make application tonight of our individual and collective lives. God, I pray tonight, Lord, that you'd help me to preach as if there was a church full of people here tonight, Lord, and just lift up the name of Jesus, the name that's above every name, Father, and I'll give glory and honor to in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, I had a statement, and a young lady said this to me this week. Uh, I'm not judging that per this person, but I can't believe they could confess to be a Christian and blank. Now, many of us could make that statement, couldn't we? I'm, I'm not judging this person or that person, but I can't believe they confess to be a Christian and they go there. Uh, they uh, like to blank. Uh, they talk like blank. They act like such. They live like that, okay? We could go on and on, couldn't we? We could fill in the blank with all kinds of scenarios. Well, when a group of 19 and 20-year-olds were asked to give their perception of the church, uh, the answers they gave back were alarming. They said the top three reasons uh, they gave with their, of their perception of the church was that the church is anti-homosexual, the church is judgmental, and they said the church is hypocritical. Now, some of that may be true, uh, but folks, it's sad when we have a group of 19 and 20-year-olds that don't know, the, know, know one iota of what God says about that homosexual lifestyle. It's sad today when we realize and, and look around us today, and, and it seems that there's no conviction, there's no guilt in that age bracket, uh, per se, of people. Well, every person, as we think about this thing of judging, okay, Every person here tonight has been on one side or the other of this subject that we're dealing with, okay? Uh, when it comes to judging or being judged, you've been either been on the, either been the judger or you've been the one who's been judged, I promise you. Well, Matthew 7, 1 probably uh, really is the most misunderstood, the most misapplied and misused verse in the Bible, I really believe. Uh, if I were to ask... Uh, or if we were to ask Jesus tonight, should we judge or not, uh, his answer would be, it all depends. Okay? You say, well, preacher, what, is that really true? It probably would be, okay? Um, now, the thing about it is, is we need to understand, um, can we judge without being judgmental? Uh, and I think that we can as we look at that scripture. Uh, let me give you an example. Sometimes we judge without knowing all the repercussions, knowing all the situations. Uh, I, Max, Max, our little grandson, Crystal's uh, youngest son, uh, there's a gentleman in his, his, their church, uh, wonderful instrumentalist, had no idea about Jesus Christ, but, and, but he had his ear, those ear things that stretched his ears, and uh, he got gloriously saved and is now serving the Christ, working in the church. Uh, but when he gives his testimony to children and youth, he tells them he wished he hadn't done some of those things before he met Christ. But because he was lost, he made some bad decisions. Okay? So, uh, in understanding that, uh, he has his ear stretched, and it would be very easy to judge him, wouldn't it? But Max, Max seems to adore him. The reason he plays the guitar, and Max thinks that he is a professional guitarist. 
Okay, uh, we bought him one of those little guitars. I thought him and uh, Justin they'll get together every now and then, and it's battery operated, and they'll make those buttons, and and they have a rock concert. But when they was a little younger, and uh, Judah did it with Justin, and, and now Max has followed suit. But Max is just a little bit more extreme. Uh, he is one. He is, he is a uh, like acid rock. Okay, uh, he goes at it. I mean the everything. All right, uh, but you have you can't even control him. He just goes berserk. All right. Uh, so anyhow, that guy's become his hero. Uh, but th this guy's so sure to tell these kids not to go down that road because he realizes he can't change that. And it'd be very easy for us just to meet him and, and bring judgment on him, wouldn't it? Okay. But Max, as being as a child's heart that he is, has become to adore him and respect him. And probably uh, he's even tried to uh, maybe teach him some chords on the guitar so far. But I'm saying that to say this. We can judge without being judgmental, okay? Don't miss that. We can judge without being judgmental. And, uh, don't miss that phrase, okay? Well, first of all, uh, we must eliminate improper judgment. The word judge that Jesus used here, judge not that you be not judged, is an interesting word. It, it's, the, it's the Greek word uh, krino. It means to discriminate uh, or, to make a, or to make a difference, Okay? Uh, in other words, it means to make a difference uh, in a person's character or a person's uh, personality or a person's witness or testimony. Okay? Uh, here it r literally means to offer a criticism that is either unfair or unjustified. Okay? So we've got to be careful that we, don't make, that we don't judge or make a criticism that's, that's uh, unfair or unjustified. Uh, because it's really, there's really no scripture for the subject matter that we're judging about. Okay, Now, there's a difference when you think about this word judge and this topic that Jesus is dealing with. There's a difference in confronting a sin and condemning a sinner. Okay, Don't miss that. A difference in confronting a sin and condemning a sinner. We have no right to condemn anyone. Jesus Christ is the only one that condemns anyone and He condemns people for unbelief. He, he condemns people for sin. Now, Stop right there for just a moment. We need to understand that not all judgment's wrong, okay? Not all judgment's wrong. You're, you're never wrong to call wrong wrong, okay? Uh, when God calls it wrong, it's wrong. And you have every right to call it wrong. And you can point it out and you can call it out and you can name it. When Jesus says it's wrong, it's wrong, okay? And when the Bible says it's wrong, it's wrong. And you have the right to judge when something's wrong, Okay? We need to understand that. And that's what Jesus said, judge not that you be not judged. We'll get back to that in just a moment. For with what judgment you judge, you shall be judged. And with what measure you measure, uh, it shall be measured to you again. So first of all, uh, we must eliminate improper judgment. Secondly, we must participate in self-judgment. Uh, look at verse 3. He said, And why beholdest thou the mote that is in thy brother's eye, but considerest not the beam that is in thine own eye? Now, he uses a, a startling illustration. It's simple. And I guarantee the audience listening to Jesus when he began to talk about this was probably rolling in laughter. They said, man, he's using, he's using such a ridiculous illustration. He's talking about one man having a splinter in his eye and another guy having a beam in his eye. Can you just picture the scenario here and the portrait Jesus a picture? Here's a man. He's staring down a splinter in, in one man's eye while he has a two before sticking out of his own eye. You remember what? The psalmist said, uh, as, as we think about judgment and judging, uh, I'm reminded of what the psalmist said in Psalm 26, verse 1 and verse 2. Uh, it's a powerful scripture that the psalmist used. And, he, and he, in chapter 26, he says this. He said, Judge me, O Lord, for I have walked in mine integrity. I have trusted also in the Lord. Therefore, I shall not slide. I sh he says, Lord, I I'll not backslide. I'll not slide away from your, my relationship and fellowship with me. Uh, that word, he, mean, he says, Lord, examine me. Uh, he comes down the verse, he said, examine me, O Lord, and prove me, test me, and try my reins in my heart. In other words, he's saying, listen, put me under the microscope. Put me, put me through the MRI. Look down in the very being of me and see what makes me tick. See what makes me operate. Judge me, O Lord. He says, if you look at my life, he says, I've walked in integrity. I've walked upright. 
I've trusted in you, and as long as I've done that, I've never backslidden as long as I've kept you in the heart of my life. That's what he's saying. And he says, examine me and prove, test me and try my reins in my heart. Now, folks, I'm about you, but that takes a lot of courage to ask God to do that, okay? So uh, judgment is very clear in the Bible. And we, we got to participate in self-judgment. And that's what Jesus is saying here. Jesus is saying, listen, make sure, that, make sure that you judge yourself first. Make sure make sure that you, you're, you're not examining the splinter in somebody else's eye when you got a beam in your own eye, okay? So as he's, we tend to see a splinter in someone else's uh, eye as a log is what he's saying. While we see the log in our eye as a splinter. That's the analogy that he's making. It's easy to clean out somebody else's closet, isn't it? It's easy to clean out somebody else's under somebody else's front porch. But he says, listen, we're examining ourselves. We're to judge ourselves so that we won't be judged. Well, you see, what you see in others is just a reflection of what you see. Uh, if it were not for God's grace, you'd have the same beam, wouldn't you? Think about it for just a moment. Now listen to that statement. That's exactly what Jesus is saying. If it wasn't for God's grace and mercy on your life, you'd have the same beam that they have in their eye. And that's why we got to be very careful when we judge, and we have to judge with biblical authority. Well, thirdly, uh, we must validate righteous judgment. Look what he said in verse 5 and 6. He said, Thou hypocrite. First cast out the beam out of thy own eye, and then shalt thou see clearly to cast out the mote out of thy brother's eye. If you're going to help him, you've got to help yourself first, is what he said. If you're going to be able to judge him uh, biblically, you have to judge yourself biblically. He says, Give not that which is holy unto the dogs, neither cast ye your pearls before swine, lest they trample them under their feet and turn again and rend you. Now, what he's saying here, as simple as we can get tonight, is this. He said a hypocrite is someone who looks out the window but never looks in the mirror. That's what he says in the heart of verse 5. A hypocrite is someone who looks out the window but he never looks in the mirror. You see, folks, we have a responsibility. For, in order for us to judge, we have to judge ourselves. We have the responsibility to look in the mirror first and then look out the window. You remember what James said in James chapter 1? Listen to what James said in chapter 1 verse 22. He said, be you doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. For if any be a hearer of the word and not a doer, he's like a, unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass or a mirror. For he beholdeth himself and goeth his way and straightway forgetteth what manner of man he was. But whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty... And continueth therein, he being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this man shall be blessed in his deed. Wow. In other words, Jesus is simply saying this. He says, listen, if you look into the mirror, the mirror, and what he's talking about is the perfect law of liberty, this is the mirror. This perfect law of liberty is that mirror because this mirror is going to reflect who you really are. It's going to show you who God is, but it's also going to show you who you are in your relationship to Him. Now for us to just to walk away from that and not pay any attention and show no regard for what He's saying to us, we're going to do more damage than we're good because we have no right to judge someone else if we're not willing to judge ourselves. Well, in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 15, uh, let me give you this scripture as well. Paul said this. He said, But he that is spiritual judgeth all things, yet he himself is judged of no man. In other words, what's he, what's he saying there? He's saying, listen, uh, he, he says in that verse very clearly, uh, that uh, if you're living under the Spirit of God, you're following the Spirit of God. Uh, you, he says that uh, that that a spiritual judges all he that is spiritual judges all things. Yet he himself is judge of no man. Uh, when you're making you're sure your life is spiritual, and you're where you need to be. You don't give anybody else any right to judge you if you're living biblically. All right. Now understand. As you read this scripture that Jesus is saying about judging and being not judged, there's a right time, there's a right reason, and a right way to judge correctly. First of all, first of all, it's not wrong to confront a person who has sinned in their life. 
And listen to John chapter 7, verse 24. In John chapter 7, verse 24, listen to that verse. Jamie, I didn't mark those. I, I meant to tell you to stick those up there, but that's okay. I'll read them. Listen to this. I got it. All right, here you go. He says, judge not according to the appearance, appearance, okay? But judge righteous judgment. Aren't we guilty so many times of judging by appearance? There's some folks that I, listen, that I looked at and I thought, oh, man, that's got to be, the, that, that's got this or that, okay? And come out to find out that person was totally opposite of what I thought they were. Have you been there? Judge not according to the appearance, but judge righteous judgment. It's not wrong to confront a person who has sin in their life, though, okay? Secondly, it's not wrong to evaluate doctrine. It's not wrong to evaluate doctrine. In 1 John chapter 4, verse 1, listen to what John says. Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits whether they are of God. He's talking about judgment. He's talking about judging what's being taught because many false prophets are going out into the world. So it's not wrong to evaluate doctrine or to judge doctrine. Judge teaching when you hear it, okay? Thirdly, it's not wrong to evaluate actions. Uh, Ephesians chapter 5, verse 11. And she's going to put that up there too. And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. Test them. And see, test them. See what they're about. Reprove them. Have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness. Those things that are suspicious. Those things that are sinful. Those practices that are questionable. Try to do everything you can to test them to see if they're biblical or not. And if not, he says stay away from them. Actions. Evaluate actions. And then, fourthly, it's not wrong to enforce church discipline, okay? And part of church discipline is judging situations. 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 6. And I'm sure, now we command you, brethren, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, uh, that you withdraw yourselves from every brother that walketh disorderly and not after the tradition which he received of us. Okay? Powerful verse. That person that's always uh, causing discord, that person that's always gossiping, that person that's always walking disorderly, trying to tear down the preacher, trying to tear down the church, full of gossip and criticism, you have a right to judge that situation and judge that person and stay away from that person. Amen? Look what in Titus 3, verse 10, 11. Uh, it, it's not wrong to enforce, once again, church discipline. And, and look what he says. And man... A man that is a heretic and after the first and second admonition, he says reject. If you go to him once, you go to him twice. After the, Look what he says. He says, knowing that he that is such is subverted uh, and sinneth being condemned of himself. He's brought judgment on himself, okay, because he has committed such uh, treacherous sin. Well, look at verse 6. He says, Give not that which is holy unto the dogs, neither cast ye your pearls before swine, lest they trample them under their feet and turn again and rend you. In other words, what's he trying to say here? He says, we're, try, we're, to, we, we are to discriminate. We are to discern between the true and the false. We're not in, to entrust the holy things of God with those who are false apostles, those who are false teachers, and those who are false shepherds. We're not to entrust the things of God to those folks who, who live in such a way and those who um, are involved in such practices. In other words... He's saying this. He says, we have every right to confront and expose those who are unclean in their lives. He uses two terms here. He uses that of the dog, uh, and he also uses uh, that of the swine. Why does he do that? Because the, the, uh, the dog, Gentiles, were known as dogs. And Gentiles uh, were the, those that were lost. They were not the part of the family of God. Which That's what you were before you got saved. He says, give not that which is holy unto the dogs. Why does he say that? Because they have no right to own that. They have no right to that because they have no relationship. He says, neither cast ye your pearls before the swine. You know, the Bible says the dog will return to his vomit, doesn't it? The Bible says that a swine, he'll return to the mire, won't he? He'll return to the slop field, uh, back to the hog trough. And he's making a powerful illustration here. He, he's saying this. He's saying, listen, <laughs> He said, you have every right to judge those who are teaching, promoting, and leading the church astray. Those who are teaching false doctrine. Those who have come up with erroneous ideas of serving Christ. And we've got a bunch of that, don't we, today? 
those who are fabricating the Word of God, those today that are turned down the church, those that are gossiping about the church, those that are talking about church folk. But we have to make sure of one thing if we're going to judge. We've got to make sure, listen, we've got to make sure that we don't have something in our own eye before we try to get something out of their eye. That's what he's saying. It's hard for you to stand behind the pulpit if you're a drunkard and tell somebody else not to be a drunkard. It's hard for a pastor to stand if, if he's fornicating with women and committing adultery to try to preach on those things and tell them not to do it. Uh, he has a responsibility to get those things out of his life before he can tell you to get them out of your life, right? As I closed, I read a story about a, um, and I think we all relate to this, a preacher who went visiting and the folks had some um, livestock, uh, and he was short looking at their property, and he noticed him and his wife, and they sort of uh, thought maybe one of the kids or had got into to a big pile of stuff. Uh, so the it was just everywhere. So they continued to ride down the road, and finally the Roma filled the car, and it got worse, and it got worse. And they'd travel about 20-some miles from where they were visiting this family. And uh, uh, they, they just got plumb raunchy. Well, finally, they got uh, all the way there, and they thought, sure, one of the kids had stepped in it. So they got home, they went in the house, and they kept smelling it, and kept smelling it. They examined all the kids' feet, but they hadn't looked at their own. And when they got in the house, it, it just filled the aroma. And when they got in there, they, they realized uh, they couldn't escape the smell. Well, I come to find out, uh, the preacher looked on his feet, and there were some on his shoes. And it was on his shoes and not the children's feet. And what he was doing was very interesting. You know what he was doing? He was analyzing everybody else, but he wasn't smelling himself. And it's easy for you and I to do when it comes to judgment. And that's what Jesus is saying. It's easy to analyze everybody else, but you need to smell yourself first, right? That's what he's saying. You need to take a close look at yourself in the mirror of God's Word before you judge others. And if you're living biblical, and, and listen, and, and if, if people are contrary to the, to the Word of God and have stepped out of bounds with the things of God, uh, it's your responsibility to confront them, to confront them in love and let them know that they've got sidetracked, okay? And that's the judgment that he's speaking of here in this particular scripture. Folks, I believe a part of the judgment he's speaking of here is discernment, discernment of your own life before you try to discern somebody else's life. Make sure the discernment, as I put up, the, we have every right to discriminate between the true and the false, folks. It's either true or it's false. Uh, we're to entrust the holy things of God to those who are apostates, or not to, excuse me, false teachers and false shepherds. We have all rights to confront and expose that which is false. That's our responsibility, and that's why we're here, to be witnesses of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Well, you can see tonight why this is America, or the world's, or America's favorite verse. And we hear this so many times. You don't have any right to judge. Listen, that's not the truth. We have a right to judge as long as we're judging based off the Word of God. If it doesn't line up with the Scriptures, if Jesus condemns it, we're to condemn it. If Jesus condones it, we're to condone it. And we have to follow the Word of God. It's our responsibility. But make sure... When we stand up to bring judgment, when we stand up to bring judgment, we got to make sure that our, that our lives are clean and pure and we don't have something in our own eye before we try to get it out of our eye. Amen? That's what he's saying. I'm going to have Danny to come and play through something tonight as we close. There may be something tonight you just need to get out of your life, lay on this altar tonight that you know it's displeasing to the Lord. I don't know what it is. But we're going to stand to our feet with our heads bowed and eyes closed for just a moment. I wonder tonight, maybe we're trying to pull something out of our brother's eye when we need to pull it out of our own eye. Maybe there's some things that you've been watching, some things you're involved in. I don't know what it may be tonight. And maybe you focused on somebody else's life so much you've forgotten to focus on your own life. We're all, we all can be guilty of that. Sometimes it's our own feet that has a smell on it. 
Maybe we just need to come tonight and ask the Lord and ask God's forgiveness and grace for ourselves so that we can be that example and that pattern. And when it comes time to stand for what's right, when we face those who have lives that have been possessed and cursed by sin, we can make sure that our lives are clean and pure so that we can be an effective witness to them and they'll have nothing against us when we try to win them to Christ and steer them in the right direction. Father, thank you for your word. Speak to our hearts now, Lord. What a sober passage of scripture. Lord, I realize, Lord, that we have a responsibility tonight to judge ourselves, to examine our hearts, to evaluate our hearts, to make sure that we're right before we start trying to clean up somebody else's life. Lord, I pray that you'd help us tonight, Lord, to look deep within and see if there's anything there individually tonight and collectively, even as a church, that would hinder us from being the effective witness that we need to be to other people's lives. Lord, I pray right now you'd speak to our hearts in Christ's name. Amen.